Hi everyone. Stephen, I would like to thank you, each and every one of you that have joined us today to celebrate the life of our beautiful daughter, Jessica. We would also like to thank every single person who prayed with us and for us during her battle with COVID-19. Today is about celebrating Jessica's life, and it's a very full life indeed. From a very little girl, Jess always wanted to do everything, and once she had made her mind up, there was no stopping her. So if we were to summarize all that she had done, seen, and achieved in her life, you would realize that she sure got her 28 years worth. She made us so proud on so many different levels, because no matter what it was, she always gave 100%. From doing ballet and taking lead roles in school plays, to competing in the World Deaf Swimming Championships in Taipei, from studying photography, beauty therapy, and finally committing her career to working with children and studying teaching. All of Jessica's adventures inadvertently dragged Stephen Warren and I along, so we spent many hours as a family at the side of a variety of different swimming pools across the country. We travelled to Cape Town and Johannesburg to visit when she lived there. We pounded the banks of the Midmar Dam and we drove to and from the airport as she flitzed back and forth. Jess was the centre of our lives. She was a ray of sunshine, lively and bubbly, with the most contagious laugh. We have the most wonderful memories of her pushing her, pet, her dog Patches around in a pram while lecturing her about something or the other in the most expressive sign language ever. Jess loved school and made the most wonderful friends. She loved Fulton and she loved her teachers, forming very special relationships with them all. What we have realized now is that she kept in touch with almost everyone she ever met, but we were not really surprised because she had that effect on people. Everyone loved her and we were often told what a special child we had. For all the outward anxiety Jess may have displayed with her head shaking when she was stressed, she was in fact an extremely brave young lady. Even as a young child, when she was competing in the able-bodied swimming competitions, she gallantly lined up with the other children, relying completely on her other senses to see when to go away. She wasn't embarrassed by her deafness and happily used the light to start at the races. Once she started swimming for KZN, she travelled all over the country with the team, even when I wasn't able to go along. Eventually at 14, she flew to Taipei with the South African Deaf Team to compete in the World Deaf Championships and of course we were not able to go along. We were so proud of how bravely and confidently she boarded the plane to fly across the world without us. Since then, Jess had become a frequent flyer and never once had she traveled as an assisted passenger, always insisting on being completely independent. Jess took a while to settle on a career, deciding initially that she wanted to be a photographer. Her pop bought her a camera and off she went to a college where she was the only deaf student and completed a year's photography course with no interpreters or assistance at all. After working in photography for a year, she decided to study beauty therapy at the National Institute for the Deaf in Worcester. We were mortified at the idea of her going so far away, but Jess was as determined as ever so we packed her off to the residence at NRD for two years. These were not the easiest two years for Jess, but she completed the diploma with flying colours and came home to work in several beauty salons and spas over the next three years. Then on a whim, she decided to see if there were any better opportunities in Johannesburg and by pure flock got offered a teaching assistant position at St Vincent's School for the Deaf. This was when Jess realized that she wanted to teach. She loved the children and was very enthralled with this job. She enjoyed living in Johannesburg, but Jess saw the need to get her teaching degree and started thinking about settling down, 
so she set her sights on eventually moving to Cape Town. She returned home at the beginning of 2020 to start this chapter, but thanks to the lockdown, this did not go to plan. She was fortunate enough to get a temporary job at Fulton School for the Deaf to keep her busy, and then at the beginning of this year, she started her studies through UNISA and got a um, teacher, teacher's assistant position at the Mary Khan School for the Deaf in Cape Town. Jess and Steve had a very special daughter-father relationship. She always knew what he was thinking, how he felt, and what he was signing, even when no one else did. Jess would know if Steve was sick or upset, happy or sad, long before anyone else. We were so blessed that she was home last year with Steve and when he had his back up and could take care of him as he recuperated, helping him with his exercises and getting him up and about again. Warren was Jessica's voice, translating for her when they were little and protecting her from other kids who may not have been as tolerant of her as he thought they should be. But she was still the big sister and enjoyed lecturing him from time to time on things like his driving, his drinking, and many other moral issues. Warren, Dad and I are so sorry that you have lost your sister. She will always be in your heart. She absolutely adored you. And she was so thrilled that you had found such a wonderful girl like Kayla. As a family, we are very blessed to have the most amazing friends in Gary and Bron, Melanie and Andrew, who have treated Jess and Warren as their own since they were born. I must at this point just thank them publicly for all that they have done and mean to us always, but especially for the rock of support the whole Ingle family has been during this awful time. The Ingalls and the Knights are a very rare breed. We are not related by blood, but by a bond far stronger. We go everywhere and do everything together. We co-parent, and the four children are as close as siblings. Jess Mill, Warren and Andrew definitely had a very special bond that excluded the adults, because they were all fluent in sign language, having learned to talk or sign since before they could talk. I think they probably had a lot of fun taking the mickey out of Gary, Bron, Stephen and I over the years. We have now gone from eight to seven, and the gap will never be filled. Gary and Bron, Mel and Andrew, words cannot express our sadness for you. We know your pain is excruciating. Thank you for loving Jess and for playing such an important role in her life. To all Jessica's extended family, her friends, deaf and hearing, colleagues, ex-colleagues, students, acquaintances, classmates, we know how hard this is for you and how much you will miss her. Remember her with love. Remember her for the inspiration she was. Remember her kindness. And most of all, remember how much she cared for each and every one of you. Robin, Jessica loved you with her whole heart. Thank you for making her so happy over the last three years and for treating her like a queen and for always encouraging her. You will always be a part of our family and we love you very much. Jessica, my angel child. She was the light of my life, my best friend, my confidant, and I never, ever imagined my life without her in it. She was all any mother could ask for. I just wish we'd had more time. Stephen and I are honoured to have been chosen by God to be this very special child's parents. We will miss her terribly. Rest in peace, Jess. Have you lost, Jess? Until we meet again. <laughs>